once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books a cease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is, and nothing more." Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer, Sir, said I, oh, madam, truly, oh, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here, I opened wide the door. darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness, period, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. In the chamber turning, all oh, my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what they're at us and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open then I flung the shutter, when with many a flit and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance, matey, not an instant stopped or steady, but with mane of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, pushed above a bust of Paris, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then the ebony bird beguiled, my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the continents of war. <coughs> Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonium shore. Quoth the raven, Never more. Much I marvel. This ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as Nevermore. 
But the raven sitting lonely on the pallid bus spoke only <coughs> that one word as if his soul and that one word he did outpour. Nothing further that he uttered, not a feather that he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered. Other friends have flown before, on the morrow he would leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken. Doubtless, said I, what it does is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master, whom a merciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till the song one burden bore, till the dirge of his hopes that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the rain still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the cushion sinking, I betook myself to linking. Fancy unto fancy what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant in cloaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the to the bird whose whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining with my head at ease reclining on the cushions velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight nothing more. She shall press up never more. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee, respite, respite, and nepenthe thee from the lost Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind nepenthe thee, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Never more. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, bird of devil. Whether tempter sent or tempters toss thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Of the rain. Never more. Prophet, said I, thing of devil, prophet still, oh, but of devil. By the heaven that bends above us, by the God we both adore, tell the soul of sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted rain maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a fair rain maiden. Whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, Never more. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shriek up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonium shore. Leave, leave no black plume as a token of the lie thy sword hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beat from out my heart. Take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven. 
have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming and the lamplight over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor and my soul from out that shadow shall be lifted 